Hi, how are you doing? Nikki? Hello. I'm great. How are you guys? Yeah, great. Good. Good. Welcome to the channel. Thanks for giving us some time. Thanks for having me. Hey, absolute pleasure. This is exciting because you're like the first people, per, people person <laughs> that we get to talk to about good things. Obviously, yeah. Janine and I, we've been talking for like the last two weeks, but you're the first like actual person we get to talk to. That's so exciting. I'm popping your good things cherry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 100%. <laughs> So, and this will I've also be. Very, I've never been to good things, even though really? I just wanted to. Really? Yeah. Yeah, okay. So, so now I'm making an extra, you know, like special um, arrival by coming all the way from Norway to, to attend good things. Well, let's just jump into there right now. So, you're, everyone can hear the accent, obviously, <laughs> but you're, you're based in Norway now. How's that transition been? It's been insane. Um, I have never been more stressed in my life. Um, yeah. but it's been totally worth it yeah because obviously I'm a Melbourne girl I'm from Australia um, and I joined a Norwegian band in my favorite place in Norway Bergen and Go so ahead. I'm living here permanently now so I am a Norwegian um, nice. as a Bergen person would say egg air Berganza. Oh, I don't know you say yeah. that. Very Australian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, yeah that's <laughs> the most Australian Norwegian ever. Now, I've got questions well, and things to say. That works in an interview. Yeah. This is great. <laughs> I was I was today years old. Now I've listened to this band for a, for a bit now. I was today years old when I realized that you were the vocalist. And I was like, how's that working? And also because our paths have crossed before because my old band supported Pagan on one of their last shows on the Central Coast, the Snake Pit Show, Mad Snake. We were the guys oh that played God. My Chemical Romance. Yeah. No way. Yeah. Are you serious? I'm dead serious. Yeah. Oh, and then you just right? realized today that I'm the new That you're the vocalist. Band. Yeah. That is so cool. In Johnny's defense, when he arrived, I was like, did you know the vocalist changed? So yeah. we're both naive to these things. Um, there you but, go. Yeah. That's so cool. Oh my so God, crazy. I love that you didn't realise that. That would have been the spit, like, trip out for, for you guys. I would have seen yeah. you and I would have gone, fuck, I swear to God, I know who this person is. <laughs> yeah. We, um, because Pagan obviously split up in January 2020 and then I joined Blood Command in February 2020 when I got a Facebook message from Ingvar, my guitar player of Blood Command, um, and he was a big fan of Pagan. And weirdly, I was also a fan of Blood Command. And he was mm. like, what are you doing now that Pagan split up? And I was like, I have no idea, but I'm <laughs> depressed and I need to do something. And he was like, well, I want you to sing for Blood Command. And I was like, oh my God, this is like a dream come true for me because- I want to, hang on, I want to say your reaction was like this, no way. <laughs> I just think it's funny that she said I was really depressed and she's gone to basically the home of black metal. <laughs> hey, forest like depressed. And, yeah. It just makes them expressive. Yeah. You go to it the middle of a, a forest in that, though. It, but like, seri no, but like seriously, I was like, not to get heavy on this line. Out of no, me. get heavy, it's fine. I'll, I'll make it funny. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I, I have a challenge for you then because my dad had just died and my mum was dying of cancer. Shit, no. bro. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Why'd you do that to me? Is it too late to use the Norway <laughs> joke again? No way. Like, I mean, my band broke up in between. Oh the... shit. <laughs> no way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. My band broke up between that and blah, blah, blah. So like I was like genuinely like struggling a lot. And then when Ingvar asked me to join the band, I was like, this is like the Sign. silver lining out of all of this crazy grief that I'm going through and I've been to Bergen in 2011 and I said at the time one day I want to live in that city and That's here so we cool. are and I bloody live here and I'm in a band that I love and it's all great and so have cool. you been able to funnel that grief and trauma and that experience into new music with a new band yeah. for you that is a great question and yes I have I found it like super cathartic like even recording Praise Armageddonism which is um our new album out on July the 1st oh, that was my um, next question. shameless plug I, yeah. 
I didn't I didn't write any of those songs. The whole album was already mastered with the previous vocalists um vocals on it. Yeah. So and we were in lockdown in Australia and the world, you know, COVID was happening. So I recorded that whole album um, with me in Melbourne with an engineer and then Ingvar produced it from Norway over Skype. What an interesting way of doing things. Mm. I know. And I was able to, because of Ingvar's songwriting and me and him write really um, similarly. Similarly. Hmm. Yeah. We write, yeah, very similarly. We, I was able to put a lot of, that emotion into the lyrics while recording, even though I hadn't written them. Yeah, which amazing. Was very unique for me too, because I always write my own lyrics. And since I've come to Norway, we've written a lot of songs together, and he and I have channeled a lot of stuff we've gone through. And yeah, it's been super cathartic, and 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 it's really helped me in a lot of ways, not just yeah. as music, but also in my life. Yeah. That's weird because I did the complete opposite. I, when my old man was passing away, I felt very overwhelmed with emotion and grief. So I actually quit the band that I was in. Um, yeah, I just, I don't know. There was just something about, we were recording at the time as well. And I just said, no, I'm done with this and bailed on it. I don't know why. So yeah, maybe the time that it happened, if, if it had been after the fact and I needed somewhere to direct the feelings afterwards perhaps it would have yeah. been a little bit more of a cathartic I think thing people handle things so differently especially when you're going through heavy stuff and for me i never ever would have thought that both of my parents dying in less than a year would have resulted in me moving to norway never but in hindsight if they didn't both die sorry sam blunt but if they didn't both die, I don't think I would have come to Norway. I think I would yeah. have just been like, yeah, well. no, but because I've like had, I've looked at life differently now, and I'm like, as cliche as it sounds, you know, life is too short and take your chances. Wanted, yeah, for mm. sure. Go to Norway. So, <laughs> yeah, like so. It's it, the, as I said earlier, the silver lining is that this is what's come out of it, and it's something super cool, and I feel very proud of myself. So it's. It's you been should like a long road to get here and you know now i'm doing exactly what i want to do and i feel so special and so lucky yeah, so good. when were you able to actually make the move over there because obviously you touched on that we were locked down for a very long time and international yeah. travel out of australia particularly was a really hard thing mm -hmm. to facilitate when did that happen um so i as i said i joined the band in february 2020 and i was a grant i was granted a travel exemption through um, Sounds Australia, who were amazing. They helped me get over there um, in November, 2021. <laughs> but the annoying thing was I went through like, I'm like so many applications and all this crazy like proof that I had to get over there, these contracts, venue agreements, all this stuff. And then like a week before I was meant to leave, they just lifted the borders. Oh, ah, you know what? We won't put it through anymore. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, that's neither here nor there. So I, I, the first time I got to meet my band was November 2021. So we'd known each other for a year and a half. 18 months of just time. internet. Like just through the internet. So I was like flying from Melbourne to Norway, never having met anyone from my band, about to go on a 36 show tour with supporting Cabal Attack. Who are <laughs> oh, wow. Band. I was going to be there for four months and I was like, what the fuck am I doing? Like, what if I don't get along with my band? Sink or swim, baby. Sink or swim. <laughs> hey, right? I want to go back to the, I want to go back to the lyric thing because I know like, you know, like for myself being a lyricist and a vocalist as well, like. You're a vocalist. Well, weird. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> um, That's an in-joke. Sorry about that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, when you are like, because uh, obviously the lyrics that you write like are very personal and, and very relatable to you and that, and obviously I'm a big fan of what Pagan did, um, so you can hear that emotion coming through in, in those bands. Was it hard or what was the process of you actually getting into the mind frame where you could make those songs your own in terms of that emotional connection? Because it's, it's easy to be a talented vocalist like yourself and, and make the song sound good, 
but with heavy music there's like you can see if it's if it's honed in if it's phoned in and just sort of by the numbers so how did you make those feel like they were coming from your heart so to speak yeah it was something really hard for me because as I said I've always just written my own vocals uh, my own lyrics and I am a songwriter and I'm that's what I love doing so if at the start it felt really strange for me and I felt like oh I don't know how I feel about this and I feel like I'm a sellout if I don't write my own lyrics and but then I when I heard the album in full I was so number one I was so flattered that the band wanted me to sing the songs and trusted me to do it and number two I was so blown away by how incredible the songwriting was Mm. and I think good songwriting no matter what the lyrics no matter what the lyrics mean from the songwriter people can draw from that what they want so make their own interpretation sort of thing yeah exactly so for me I interpreted some of the songs differently to what Inga wrote them about but for me it still made a hundred percent sense like why it meant that to me and I've all as a side note as well I've always done that with music like if I was ever going through a break I'd break up I'd listen to like you know Avril Lavigne and be like this song is about my ex you know like, <laughs> I'm like I always like find like a personal thing in music so I, I when I went into the studio to record the songs I really like was thinking about things I was going through at the time and like sung the lyrics with that objective and that intention and now and with that the emotion really comes through in the songs um and yeah I also had the advantage as well because Karina the old vocalist had recorded the songs already I was able to hear her vocals and you know like in parts that I thought oh this bit's a bit lacking and like some you know some of the songs she recorded sounded great some of them I would have changed and I had the advantage of being like this is where I would change this or try this at least you had a reference point sort of thing though which kind of like a little bit of the groundwork done I guess (laughs) yeah it was it was yeah definitely an advantage going into the studio for sure but yeah I just interpreted the songs I in the way that I thought that that's what they meant um I also asked in the what the so each song meant before going in yeah. and I just channeled my own personal experience into those songs so it was it was a cool process actually and with so, going forwards is there more plan for you to start writing the lyrics and, and take over that role or are you happy to sort of share that mantle a little bit or um we yeah so we've um when I was in Norway for four months from November to March I um Inga and I spent a majority of that time writing together so um moving forward all of the songs are written by both of us yeah Yeah, I I can't have songs written for me it's not in my DNA yeah yeah yeah, because you you need that artistic expression yeah I've I've got I got too much to say (laughs) (laughs) your your voices aren't that dissimilar though like there's a lot of similarities in your vocals and the last vocalist The thing that kind of got me, like when I was listening to like the the newest songs, because that's you on the newest ones. Yeah. It was strange because I always remember, like I said, from Pagan and Pagan was a far more aggressive band, yet it seems like you've interjected like a lot more melody in parts in these songs than the previous vocalists had. How's it been being able to sort of stretch your vocal wings like that a little bit? It's been so cool. It's when I went to the studio, I didn't know how I was going to tackle the screaming parts in particular in the blood command songs, because in Pagan, I just go like a hundred percent, just scream. Yeah. Like some of the songs had like a bit of melody here and there, but nowhere near as much as what blood command had. And with working with Ingva as the producer, he was able to, pull things out of me that I didn't even know that I could do or that I wouldn't have thought of like he had so many cool ideas and he he really loved my voice and he was able to like think of ideas that would work really well with the blood command sound but then bring a lot more like punk into like the poppier songs yeah um a, a really cool thing as well for fans is that blood command have actually released a song 
which will with Karina, who was the previous vocalist with her vocals, they've released the song. It's on Spotify. And this song is going to be on the album with my vocals. Oh. And you will definitely hear a huge difference. Like, yeah, that's going to be cool. Yeah. I agree. There's, you know, like maybe just listening to the songs, you'd be like, oh, that could be the same vocalist. But I think with me, I am a hardcore vocalist. So the heavier songs are heavier and the popular yeah. songs are more fun. And I think that that really lends itself well to blood command mm, yeah like, it's such an eclectic sound that, as a band you guys have so to have that versatility it's just another weapon in their arsenal which is really exciting for them i'm sure yeah talk to us about touring so where are you in norway right now yes yeah, so i've moved here permanently i moved here on the 20th of may okay um i, I live in bergen um in my own little apartment it's super cool look at you growing um, up <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> um, I'm. I had a job trial yesterday, which was crazy. Oh, and I, I, hopefully, I'll get it. Um, but yeah, so sorry, I've forgotten. The, I've totally forgotten the question. What, sorry, is it, you're over there now. But have you started <laughs> touring friend. with the band? I, I have. I started touring with the band. Yeah. Yeah. So in um in no in November through to March, November 2021 through to March 2022, we were supposed to do 36 shows with Cabal Attack. Yeah. But oh, because did that happen? COVID, that yeah. got rescheduled and blah, blah, blah. Okay. So we mm. spent that time in the studio and we were able though, luckily, to still do um, some Scandinavian shows. Cool. So we did um, six shows in Sweden and Finland, which was nice. so exciting. It was my first time ever doing shows in Scandinavia. And then we, when I came back in May, now that I'm here permanently, we, we've just done the last lot of shows with Cabal Attack. So okay, cool. um, I played my first ever Norwegian shows. Which Hell yeah. Was crazy. We did uh, Oslo and Stavanger. Um, and it's just been amazing doing live shows with the band. They, the boys have just been so supportive and they're like, <laughs> they just let me do whatever I want on stage, which obviously well. I would do anyway. But not to blow smoke up your ass, but I don't know if you ever got to catch Pagan live, I but didn't. your stage presence is fucking phenomenal. Like it really is. And anyone watching this who hasn't seen you live needs to do it because yeah, I remember we were watching at that show just going, holy shit. Like she just doesn't fucking stop. Like she just <laughs> all over the place, like turning yourself into a pretzel and yeah, it was great. It was fantastic. So um, I'm sure you bring a, a new element to the band in that sense. How has yeah. the reception been with older fans to you as the vocalist, though? Um, like, you know, I I don't want to, I'm not here to diss the old vocalist or anything. Yeah, of course. In their own right. Um, but I have stepped it up. I'm not going to lie. And everyone's told me that. And I'm proud of myself. And I'm going to fucking say it. I don't care. Hell I've yeah. made the band a better live band. And that's the bottom awesome. line. We're, we're on a Love that confidence now and I every fan has said this is this is what Blood Command should always be you know oh, that's so really awesome it's just it's yeah it's just head to toe Adidas just slut dropping um, I noticed I noticed that I noticed like weekends the- with Johnny <laughs> Hey, I I was on tour the other week and I did find myself in like a nightclub surrounded by 20 year olds and me and the rest of the boys just there. Because I tease you about your little drinking green Midoris and just like dancing along to Genuine Pony and shit like that, man. Because on stage, I'm always like, if I want to, like, I just dance how I want to dance and I don't think about the way I'm moving. Like, I just do what I want to do. Because I think that's a lot more punk than, you know, yeah, for sure. Um, but our first ever show in Gothenburg with Cabal Attack, it was, you know, it was a sold out show in Gothenburg. First ever show I'm playing with this band, haven't played in two years, freaking the hell out, get on stage. I'm just like, hell yeah, this is where I'm born to be, just doing my thing, you know, just first song in, I like, I'm wearing like an Adidas jacket and I take it off. So I'm wearing like a sports bra, Adidas tracksuit pants, just doing my thing. After the show, get off stage. Everyone's just like on a high. We're all like, "Fuck yeah, first show, woo!" 
then when this Facebook <laughs> comment pops up on Blood Command's Facebook, and <laughs> it's from this girl, which I distinctly remember seeing her in the <laughs> front row because when I was taking my jacket off, I rem- she she like gave me like a death stare, and then she stormed off like really dramatically. And I just remember in my peripheral vision, I just saw, saw that moment happen. Didn't think anything of it, continued with the set. So, yeah, then we're, we're off stage. We get this Facebook comment and the girl's like, too bad, your new singer looks like a Russian hooker. <laughs> <laughs> and I've made it. <laughs> I, wow. I did it. <laughs> That's all I ever wanted, guys. The perfect Damn. review. That's brutal. Jeez. I responded oh. with, Number one, I'm Slovenian, and number two, it's a sex worker. <laughs> <laughs> the pronunciation's right. Okay, let's talk good things. You've seen the full lineup, I assume. You know who you're playing with? Um, I saw it like yeah, maybe five minutes ago. Oh, that's so exciting! Ooh. So, can I, the next question is going to be: Who are you excited to be seeing, playing with, being on stage with? Because normally, we ask when we're doing interviews, like, "What bands are you looking forward to touring with?" And this is a, a it's a big lineup. It's a very exciting lineup. It's a great lineup. Um, I, it, it's a tough one just because I've I only just saw it. I think um, do, do you want any refreshes? I can give you a refresh. Yeah, if you maybe need it. maybe if we do a refresher. Yeah, I can give you a little refresh. So obviously, you've got Bring Me the Horizon headlining. We've got Deftones, No Effects, Pain, Punk in Drublic, uh, Tism. We've got the Amity Affliction, Gojira, 1AK Rock, 303, Blow Command, Chasing Ghosts, Cosmic Psychos, Electric Callboy, Fever 333, Ginger, Jaden, Kiss Chasey, Lacuna Call, McMillan Call, Nova Twins, Polaris, Red Hook, Regurgitator, Sabaton, Sleeping with Sirens, Soul Flight, The Story So Far, and Thornhill. This is the best line. Of- it's going to be a hell of a time. Stoked for Jimmy as well. For what? Nova Jimmy. Oh, there. yeah. I yeah, really Nova Twins are there. Mm. Oh, my God. I really want to see them. They seem so sick. Also um, excited I they're know. playing with Bring Me because I'm hoping we get the little Nova oh, Twins. Oh, the feature. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Oh, yeah. So that. definitely Nova Twins. Cool. Definitely Polaris just now because I've only seen them um, before. They, like, really blew up. Oh, they cool. Shows with them. Like, you yeah. know, we used to go, like, in festivals and stuff. And, I, you know, the metalcore isn't so much my thing, but I just think that they're really nice people and I would love to see them. They're like, sweethearts. Like, yeah. Huge crowd. Um, Gojira. Oh. Um, just, yeah, Tism, definitely. Yeah, that's <laughs> crazy, Tism. Them too, because yeah. I don't think they would know who they were. First show in 19 years. Holy shit. Isn't that wild? That's amazing. Is also, that I didn't even know Soulfly was still a band. They're going to be oh, there, baby. Cool. It's so cool. I'm actually so excited. Yeah, there's some really cool little, like as I said, you've got No Effects Pain, Punk in Drublick. You've got Kiss Chasey playing United Paper People in full. Jesus. So, Kiss well Chasey, yeah. Wow. Last yeah, season. isn't it? I think they've done a great I job of like having the old and the new. Yeah, which I expected from good things from them. Mm. You know, they're really good for being the nostalgic thing. And then, yeah. Like, you know, always having like a big headliner. So I'm not surprised that a band like Kiss Chase is on there. And I yeah, that's that's exciting. Cool. Yeah, yeah, hells yeah. So we normally wrap up interviews with some would you rather questions because mm. Johnny likes to make people uncomfortable. Yep, that's what I did. <laughs> <laughs> so would you rather be a Russian hooker or a Slovenian hooker? Ah, uh, sex worker. We've been sex through this. Worker. Fucking hell. Yeah, Slovenian sex worker. Yeah, all right. So would you rather... Would you rather have a permanent monobrow or no eyebrows? Now, we've thought this through because yeah. bands have thrown these little fucking nuances out. We have caveats now. Yeah. You're not allowed to shave the monobrow. You're not allowed to draw the eyebrows on. Oh, because I was about to say definitely the no eyebrows because my drug dealer in Norway. Sorry, I probably shouldn't say that. It didn't happen. We don't know what you're talking about. You've got a medical condition. It's fine. I keep that in. But yeah, my dealer in Norway, she has amazing green eyebrows that she paints on. She's a cyber oh, and I'm like, You can't do that. You'd have to have the uh, eyebrows. I think I would want the monobrow because then I'd look like the one eyebrow baby from The Simpsons and I think that's the cutest baby. you got to get rid of the teeth though and just have that real big yeah. one center thing going on. <laughs> <laughs> it's a strong look. I love that. Would you rather be a Marvel superhero or a character in Star Wars? 
it's just that's a really hard one for me because I do not care about either movie. Oh, right. Oh, yeah. yeah. I've yeah. seen all of Star Wars because my older sister used to be obsessed when I was a kid. It's an interesting one where you're like, I don't care, but I've seen them all. <laughs> I know, right? It's really weird. Um, I would probably rather be Marvel because I watched Spider-Man on the plane recently and I really liked Zendaya in that. So oh, she's a babe. Like yeah. Good yeah. choice. You can do that. No <laughs> pressure. Well, what character would you be then from anything? Maybe Spider-Man because he shoots the cum stuff out of his ribs. <laughs> yep, that's what he does. And there's no corrections needed. My people. You just, you're, you're my person. It's great. I'll be over here. He just, he's always trying to... <laughs> He's always trying to stop me bringing the lowbrow to the channel. So when we get an artist on here that just is the exact same, it just, it warms my cold black heart. It's <laughs> semen covered heart. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> All right, well, let's go with the question that, the, the question that comes in, and this is by the very divisive one. Mm -hmm. Would you rather play a show in cold, wet socks or cold, wet underwear? I think cold wet underwear because usually I feel like I'm going to pee my pants before I go on stage anyway. So the but likelihood of that you? happening one day is very likely. Like it's going to happen one day anyway, I reckon. It hasn't okay. yet. But so okay. I reckon the cold wet underwear because then like whatever, just let it all Just out. warm them up. Then I can actually pee myself and it doesn't matter. I'm just looking for that excuse. You're also the first female to answer that question though. I don't know whether like junk wise that changes things because Guys have more chafing stuff going on. Yeah. Whereas maybe you're you went for the I'll just pay myself option. <laughs> <laughs> Go on wish.com no, and get one of the she wee things. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. Or just piss yourself. Like yeah. that's fine. Yeah. You're gonna piss someone off, may as well do it yourself. <laughs> as long as I'm wearing like grey tracksuit pants or something where you can make it very it. obvious. Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. You can't be subtle about it. <laughs> Peeing my pants is the coolest. Um, okay, so the last question that we're gonna have is your absolute dream tour artist, live or dead, who would you most like to play a show with? Oh, this is such a hard question. Mm -hmm. I would have fuck around here. I <laughs> um I really should have thought about this before. I mean we didn't ask until <laughs> right now, bitch. <laughs> Cardi B. That oh, is shit. Left field yeah. as they come. Why? Whoa. Yeah, either I reckon Cardi B or Lil Nas X. They're my two. Yeah. Why? Because they're just they're the most punk of all. Like fuck these punk bands thinking they're punk. Like okay. Cardi B is an African American woman who is slaying the rap scene. You know, up until like maybe three or four years ago, it was all men in the forefront in that. Genre. Mm. Yeah, except for Missy Elliott, pretty much. Yeah. Elliott, yeah. Like Nicki Minaj. Down. Nicki Minaj has been killing yeah, it for a good ten years. Yeah. They were a handful, but like now it's like the girls are mm. slaying. And <laughs> with Lil Nas X, you know, he's a queer person who. Has yeah, we like his stuff. We've liked his a few. We've actually done a few of his film clips on here. Mm. Um, I like how creative and a bit just like he does what he wants vibes. That's pretty cool. Yeah, me so I think that they're yeah top two. Right. stay tuned for the uh, Cardi B Lil Nas X and Blood Command show that'll yeah, be that'll quite be an eclectic mix be interesting to see how their music goes I down there you wouldn't go to see that though oh, I would definitely go so just to watch you be yourself it'd be great yeah. <laughs> well, it's been an absolute pleasure chatting with you we are so excited for December to come around thank you I'm so excited to come back to Australia back on home soil <laughs> escape the Norwegian winter it's gonna be yeah. so nice you've also escaped Australian winter and it's been a cold one so far anyone that's yeah. not Australian is gonna be like it's not cold over there but seven degrees by the beach is it's cold, cold enough it's pretty yeah. cold it's pretty 100%. cold not not in Norwegian standards but it that's oh no yeah. yeah 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 you and would experience probably winter. we will see you at good things and we'll crack a tinny and well yeah. you don't drink you'll have I don't drink water. I'll have a yeah. sparkling water and yeah. fancy yeah. bring you out of this yeah, I don't wear out of this. Sorry, you guys can wear out of this and crack beers, and I'll go hang off over there. Bring your wet socks or whatever you want to do. Got them. Legend. Thanks, Eve, Nikki.
Thank you. Thank you for having me, guys. Our pleasure. Absolute pleasure.